okay very good morning to my dear students so now we will start our lecture of science too first of all i would like to share my screen to you We will start just now. So, my dear students, on behalf of Bren Mumbai Municipal Corporation Online Education English Medium, myself Jayshri Jaswal from Chinchauli MPS Malad West. Today, I am hereby to take your lessons on Science Two of Class Nine, as we have started a chapter number sixteen, Heredity and Variation. Today is our session four for this chapter. So, first of all, we will take a re quick recall of our previous portion. Now, what we have seen in our previous lectures, we have seen the topic inheritance, yeah, genetic heredity, inherited traits, and expression of traits. We have seen about the chromosomes, their structure of chromosomes. on the position of the centromere how many types of chromosomes are there there are four types of chromosomes that are metacentric submetacentric acrocentric and telocentric yeah and based on their functions chromosomes can be somatic and the sex chromosomes okay then in the second session we have seen about the dna what is the full form of dna deoxyribonucleic acid yeah so who have discovered this dna molecule fredrick meyer in which year in 1869 and we have studied that dna is present in all the organisms for example viruses bacteria all plants animals and human being so what is the function of dna the function of dna is to control the functioning growth and division that is reproduction of the cell okay and it also bears what hereditary characters and is responsible for genetic transmission and for this reason dna are called as what master molecule what they are called they are called as a master molecule then we have seen about the structure of dna what is the structure of dna who has proposed the model for dna structure watson and crick so what they have proposed that the dna molecule is a double helix it is just like a string okay and it is made up of nucleotides each nucleotide is made up of an phosphoric acid deoxyribo sugar and a nitrogenous bases okay so in dna what are the nitrogen bases there are of two types purines and pyrimidines purines are of two types adenine and guanine pyrimidines are of two types cytosine and thymine okay the helicals have hydrogen bonds with the opposite sides this is all about the dna now what are the genes genes are defined as the functional units of the heredity and genes control what is the function of it genes control the structure and the function of the body and also help to okay then we have seen about the dna finger printing what we have seen dna finger printing yeah in this what is the dna finger printing the sequence of the genes in the dna of a person is called as genome and this technique is used to identify the lineage and to identify criminals because it is an unique to every person then we have seen about the human genome project so what is a human genome project 
Human Genome Project is a great work in the field of human genetics, which has been done by the few nations. Okay. Then we have seen about the RNA. What is the full form of RNA? Ribonucleic acid. And this is the another important nucleic acid, which is formed of nucleo ribonucleotide molecules. And it is also made up of ribosugar, phosphate molecules, and four types of nitrogenous bases. It, they are same to DNA, but only one uh, nitrogenous bases are different. That is adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Instead of thymine in RNA, uracil is present. Okay, my dear students, up till here you understand. And there are different types of RNA also. Three types of RNA, rRNA, mRNA, and tRNA. rRNA means ribosomal RNA, mRNA means messenger RNA and tRNA means transfer RNA. Then we have seen about the Mandel's principles of heredity. Here is an introduction of a scientist that is Groger John Mandel. And who was a Groger John Mandel? He was an Austrian monk or an Austrian scientist who studied the inheritance of a traits in a pea plants and he developed the laws of inheritance by doing what researches on the plants especially pea plant and Mendel's work was not recognized until the turn of the 20th century means up till 20th century his uh, various researches were not seen by anyone but in after in 21st century and after 20th century his work was appreciated and recognized. Okay. So he was the person who is responsible for the principles of the heredity. Okay. Now, see the next slide. This picture. This picture is of a pea plant. This pea plant is Pisum sativum. What is the scientific name of the pea plant? It's an Pisum sativum. So this scientist, uh, Mandel, the he, what he has done, the genetic material which is transferred in equal quantity from parents to progeny, he has searched this. And which is that genetic material? He has researched. Okay. So, Mandel carried out research in this direction and put forth the principles of heredity which are responsible for such inheritance. In the previous lecture, we have seen what is inheritance. Inheritance is the tendency to transmit the variations from the one generation to the next. Means what? The characters which are transferred from our parents to us. This is inheritance. Okay. So, he has studied all these cases in the plant that is pea plant. So, all of Mandel's experiments were based upon the visible characteristics of the pea plant that is Pisum sativum. Okay, now you can understand which is a pea plant. So what he has seen, see in this slide you can understand yesterday I have explained you that dominant and the recessive character. Dominant character means with the characters which are directly transferred from our parents to us. What are the recessive characters? The characters which are not observed by us. Okay, so in case of pea plant, see this, what about the seed shape? In dominant, it is round and in recessive, it is wrinkled. You can see in the slide in these pictures. Okay. What about the seed color? In the dominant, uh, what type of color it is having? Yellow. And in recessive, it is green in color. What about the flower color? In dominant, the color of the flower is purple. And in recessive, the color of the flower is white. You can see in the slide, you are able to see. Yeah? Yes. Then, what is the shape of the pod? In dominant, the shape of the pod is inflated. And in recessive, it is constricted. See? What is the color of the pod? In dominant, the color of the pod is yellow. And in recessive, the color of the pod is green. What about the flower position? In dominant, the flower position is axial. And in recessive, it's a terminal. Okay. What about the height of the stem? In dominant, the height of the stem is tall. And in recessive, the height of the plant is dwarf. So, these are the researches which were done by the Mandels and he has observed in the pea plant. Okay. Moving to the further, in case of human beings, just now we have seen this, all these characters which are 
which we are observing in the pea plant but now see this dominant and recessive characters in the human beings first character is eye color in dominant we can see what brown or black these are the common colors which we are seeing in our human beings or in our surrounding yeah but recessive it's a blue color we rarely see yes or no hair curly hair it's a dominant straight hair it's a recessive what about the chick dimple chick it's a dominant and normal it's a recessive what about hand right hand and see most of the people and most of the human beings they are what right handed and we, uh, we see rarely the left handed so they are recessive character what about the rolling of the tongue in dominant means what most of the people or most of the human beings they can roll their tongue but some are there some are there who can not so non rollers and what about the skin pigmentation in dominant in our india we can see mostly the normal skin color okay and what about the recessive character it's an albino okay this characters which we can see in the human beings are or this okay now moving further to the mono hybrid cross now what is mono hybrid cross the cross with only one pair of constructing characters is called as mono hybrid cross in the term only we can understand we can see that what do you mean by mono a single or a one so the cross with only one pair of contrasting characters is called as a mono hybrid cross okay so in this experiment let us consider the characteristics of plant hybrid with a pair of contrasting characters that is tall plant and the dwarf plant yeah a common uh, characteristic is plant hybrid that is and hybrid can be tall or it can be dwarf yeah so moving further see this in the parenten generation p1 consisted of what tall and the dwarf one tall and the dwarf plant and this plants were crossed with each other so what we have seen after crossing this plant the f1 generation is obtained yes f is what is here f f is for the pilili all the f1 offsprings were what tall they are tall and none of them was dwarf dwarf means what small heighted this is all about the f1 generation when the plants were self crossed okay then what about the f2 generation means what mendel called tallness as a dominant character while dwarf is said to be an recessive character as it was not showing its presence see in the f1 generation not a single uh, plant is showing the dwarfness yes so mendel concluded that the factors responsible for inheritance of characteristics are mostly present in pairs so now these factors are called as what genes okay so the experiments and its results are shown in the punnett square so capital 2t letters pair of genes of one parent okay and small 2t pair of a genes of a another parent so what about the f2 generation so when this in f2 generations when they are self cross between the f1 plants the f2 generations show the following gamut so what is the genotype here see three plants were tall and only one plant is dwarf so what ratio we have seen 3 is to 1 means three tall plants and one dwarf plant okay this is all about the mono hybrid cross see this is an punnett square now parent generation p1 here the phenotype is what tall and dwarf genotype means what the presence of the genes capital 2t means what tall and small 2t means dwarf what are the gametes here single t and small t now first phylogenetic generation what it shows the phenotype the most of the plants were tall okay so in the parental generation p2 selfing in f1 the crosses were done with the self so here the phenotype was tall and short genotype is one capital t one small t what are the gametes what we gametes what are the gametes we are getting one capital t and one small t so what we have seen in the second phylogenetic generation f2 here we have seen that only one perfect tall plant is there otherwise two tall plants are there but they are not that so okay 
so and only one dwarf plants are visible in this progeny means one homozygous dominant and two heterozygous dominant and one homozygous recessive understand up till here homozygous diamond dominant means capital two t letters heterozygous means one capital letter and one small one okay and homozygous recessive means both are same both letters are same this is all about the mono hybrid cross okay so what happens in mono hybrid cross he crossed a tall plant with a dwarf plant and observed how the traits are transmitted the progeny and calculated the percentage of tallness and dwarfness in subsequent generations so when a pure breeding tall plant tt was crossed with a pure breeding dwarf plant small tt all plants were tall in the first perennial generation that is f1 but when such an f1 tall plant was allowed to self pollination both the tall and dwarf plants were appeared in the second generation of f2 means what according to the data collected by the mendel out of 929 p plants 705 that is 705 plants were tall and 224 were short thus the phenotypic ratio of plants is 3 tall 1 dwarf and genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 same t d means what just now i told homozygous dominant one capital t one small d it shows heterozygous and both small t uh, gametes it shows homozygous recessive so thus it can be inferred that in the f2 generation phenotypically there are two types of plants whereas genotypically there are three types so my dear students up till here you understand all about the mono hybrid cross yes now moving further to the next topic that is mandel's experiment on di hybrid cross now what is there in this in di hybrid cross what happens mendel brought about a cross between a pea plant producing rounded and a yellow colored seed see here two characters are there yellow and yellow and yellow colored and the rounded seed and the pea plants with wrinkled and green colored seed okay what are the two characters the plant which is having rounded and yellow color seed of the plant and green color and the wrinkled seed so in this cross when the two pairs of contrasting characters were considered that is color of the seeds and the shape of the seeds hence it is called as an d hybrid cross why it is called as an d hybrid cross because when the two pairs of contrasting characteristics are under consideration then it is called as an d hybrid cross so round and yellow seed bearing plant was crossed with a green and wrinkled seed bearing plant of to have a di hybrid cross so round and yellow are the dominant characters green and wrinkled are the recessive characters up till here you understood yeah now moving further now mendel's experiment of d hybrid cross now what is the parental generation it's a p1 now first parent it is round seed so it is indicated by capital 2r yellow seed it is indicated or it is given the name capital 2y second parent wrinkled seed it is represented by a two small letters of r and two small letters of y shows the green color seeds up till here you understood now then what are the gametes from r r y y means total capital letters parents means r y and the gametes from small r small y x and small r small y okay so now here the genotype is genotype for the rounded yellow seeds is this one for the wrinkle green seeds it is this what are the gametes we are getting for the round yellow seed this and for the wrinkle this now the first filial generation f1 what it shows we get for this the genotype of this plants was capital r small r capital y small y so they are phenotype was producing what rounded yellow seed what 
rounded yellow seeds in the first generation what we get rounded yellow seeds now moving further to the parental generation p2 now here f1 means what all the plants form show round and yellow seeds yes so what is the genotype all are having heterozygous that is r r y y so the offsprings obtained through such a cross is called d hybrid so the plants with r r y y produced four kinds of combinations of gametes that is both capital r and y one capital one small one small one capital and one both are small okay from the rounded yellow seeds what we have seen here also the same one so four gametes we have seen here so when we form an punnett square what we observe when we will form an punnett square means the parental generation when the self cross were done what is the phenotype here rounded yellow seed is cross with the rounded yellow seed then what happens what is the genotype here capital r capital y capital r capital y what are the gametes here four gametes we have formed so what is the second filial generation is shown here here we get see how many this type of yellow purely yellow rounded seeds we are seeing see here 1 2 3 4 5 6 yeah then uh, 7 8 9 so round and purely yellow seeds are how many in numbers nine are there round and green seeds now round and green seeds 1 2 3 total 3 Round and green seeds. Now three wrinkled and yellow seeds. Now you can see in this one, two, three, three wrinkled and yellow seeds. And what about the wrinkled and the green seeds? Only one, which is pure means homozygous recessive. Here only we are getting one. So what type of phenotypic ratio we are seeing here? Nine is to three is to three is to one. Now moving forward, use your brain power. now we can study about the phenotypic ratio and the answer yeah now see just now we have counted round yellow seed total number of 9 wrinkled yellow what is the number 3 round green what is the number here 3 what about the wrinkled green it is 1 it is 1 so this is what this is all about the phenotypic ratio what about the genotypic ratio now use your brain here what is the genotypic ratio now see here the numbers are given see purely capital means round and yellow how many pure dominant only one then pure recessive you can see in this chart see this all are small in the last number so it is an pure recessive okay this one see round and yellow how many two Round and yellow one. In this way, you have to find out the genotypic ratio. You can understand from here. Means what? Round and yellow two are there. Yes. Then round and green one is there. Yes. Then wrinkled and yellow how many are there? Two are there. Then round and yellow you can search here. So from this gamete formation only you can identify their what genotype. so up till here you understood so on this basis what we can do we can distinguish between the mono hybrid and the di hybrid crop so now what is all about the mono hybrid inheritance and the di hybrid inheritance now we can see here the first point is what it is inheritance in mono hybrid the inheritance of a single allele pair here only single pair is done or cross in di hybrid inheritance patterns of two pairs of characters during a di hybrid cross in mono hybrid only single character single pairs of characters and in di hybrid di hybrid it's two pairs of characters what is mono hybrid inheritance it is defined in the mendel's first law okay mono hybrid inheritance it is defined in the mendel's first law but di hybrid inheritance it is defined in the mendel's second law in the mendel second law then in mono hybrid inheritance the phenotypic ratio of the f2 generation is 3 is to 
3 is to 1. And in D hybrid, the phenotypic ratio of the F2 generation is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. What about the genotopic ratio in the monohybrid? F2 generation, it is 1 is to 2 is to 1. And in D hybrid inheritance, the genotypic ratio of the F2 generation is 1 is to 2 is to 1, 2 is to 4, 2 is to 1 and 2 is to 1. Means total numbers you can add, you can get. Now, monohybrid and inheritance. How it is used? It is used to study the pattern of inheritance during the first and the second generation of things. Okay. Where it is used, this monohybrid inheritance, it is used to study the pattern of the inheritance during the first and the second generation of spring. Now, what about the dehybrid inheritance? It is used to study the inheritance pattern of dominant and the recessive characters for two different traits. So, where this dehybrid inheritance we can use? This is used to study the inheritance pattern of dominant and the recessive characters for two different threads. So, my dear students, in yesterday we have seen the monohybrid cross and today we have seen in detail about the what? Dihybrid cross. So, we will take a quick recall of today's lecture, what we have studied with the help of these slides only so that you can understand and I want that if you want, you can take a screenshot from this so that you can be, it can be easier for you to study or to revise the lesson. Okay. Now, today we have seen about the Groger John Mandel, who was an Austrian scientist. He studied the inheritance of a rat in a pea plant and he developed the laws of inheritance. Yes. Then, in Mandel's work was not recognized until the turn of the 20th century. Then he has performed all this, all his researches on this plant that is pea plant. What is the scientific name of this plant? Pisum sativium. Yes, here the genetic material is transferred in equal quantity from parents to progeny. So Mandel's carried out research in this direction and put forth the principles of heredity which are responsible for such inheritance and all of the Mendel's experiments were based upon the visible characteristic of the pea plant that is Pison sativium. Okay, then we have seen, see in this slide you can observe the dominant and the recessive character in a pea plant. You can see the dominant one and the recessive round, wrinkled, yellow and green, flower color, purple and white, pot shape, in flattered, constricted. What about the pot color, yellow and green? What about the flower position? In dominant, it's an axial and in recessive, it's an terminal. What about the stem height? In a dominant, it is tall and in recessive, it is dwarf. So it can be asked in the exams, all these characters in a tabular form to complete the table. Okay. Now, we can see there the slide about the dominant and the recessive character in a human being. Yes, we can see. So, see here the characteristics of the human beings. See, eye color. In dominant, we can see brown or black. And in recessive, we can see only blue. Okay, what about the eye size? Large in dominant, small in recessive. What about the hair? What type of hair? Curly hair we can see in dominant and straight hair we can see in recessive. What about the cheek? Dimple cheek we can see in dominant and normal in recessive. What about the hand? See most of the people we see they are right handed and most rarely we can see the left handed person. Yeah. Rolling of the tongue. Mostly the uh, persons are they can roll their tongue but in recessive most rarely the uh, persons are having non-rolling tongue. Okay. What about the fetus testis? Tested and non tested Then skin pigmentation. The skin color in dominance is normal, but in recessive, it's an albino. Okay. This is all about the human being. Then we have seen about the monohybrid cross. What is monohybrid cross? The cross with only one pair of contrasting characters is called as what as monohybrid cross. Here, only one pair of contrasting character is considered. And this experiment, let us 
in this experiment he has considered only one character that is plan high okay with a pair of contrasting characteristic that is tall plant and a dwarf plant okay now here this is the what this is the presentation of the crossing okay so if uh, after this self crossing what happens in f2 generation what we have got that three tall plants and one dwarf plant so what is the ratio here three is to one then you can see in this punnett square you can see the genotype phenotype and the gametes what are the phenotypes the naming tall and dwarf what is the genotype this is the this are the terms t t and small t and the gametes which you are getting from here this so in the first phylogenetic generations we get mostly the tall plants then in p2 generations what is the phenotype tall tall in genotype what is this and these are the gametes so what with the help of the punnett square what we have seen in the second phylogenetic generation that three are tall and one is dwarf but only one is purely homozygous what dominant but two are heterozygous dominant and one is recessive uh, gene okay now so what is monohybrid we have seen that he crossed a tall plant with a dwarf plant and observed how the traits are transmitted and the progeny and calculate the percentage of tallness and dwarfness in subsequent generations when a pure breeding tall plant was crossed with a pure breeding dwarf plant all plants were tall in the first phylogenetic generation when such a f1 tall plant was allowed to self pollination both the tall and the dwarf plants were appeared in the second generation okay so according to the data collected by the mendel out of 929 p plants 705 were tall and 220 pair were short thus the phenotypic ratio of this plant is what 3 is to 1 is to 1 okay so what is the genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 okay thus it can be interpreted that in the f2 generation phenotypically there are two types of plants whereas genotypically there are three types of plants then we have seen about the dihybrid cross here in this cross two pairs of contrasting characteristics were considered that is color of seeds and the shape of the seed hence it is called as a dihybrid cross then see here you can see the phenotypic genotype the gametes which we have seen here so in the first filial f1 generation so what is what phenotype we got rounded yellow seeds rounded yellow seeds we have seen in the f1 generation now in the parental generation p2 when the rounded yellow seeds were crossed with cell then what the gametes which we have got we have got four gametes so second filial generation with the help of the punnett square we can see here see how many uh, plants we have get so in further slide we can see the phenotypic ratio here see the round yellow it's of nine number wrinkled yellow it's three round green it's three and wrinkled green is one so what is the genotypic ratio of this see pure dominant is what round and yellow and pure recessive means what round and not round wrinkled yellow okay so this is all about the mono uh, sorry Die hybrid cross. So in this way you can do. So and you have to take this screenshot of this distinguish between mono hybrid and die hybrid cross. In exams it can be asked differentiate between distinct mono hybrid and die hybrid cross. So in this way you can differentiate this both crosses. Okay, one time I can repeat this. What is mono hybrid inheritance? Inheritance of a single allele pair. the hybrid inheritance it's an inheritance pattern of two pairs of characters during a dihybrid cross and what is mono hybrid inheritance defined in a mendel's first law and dihybrid inheritance is defined in a mendel's second law then in mono hybrid cross phenotypic ratio of the f2 generation is 3 is to 1 in the hybrid inheritance phenotypic ratio of the generation is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 genotypic ratio of the f2 generation in mono hybrid is 1 is to 2 is to 1 in dihybrid it's 
genotypic ratio of f2 generation is 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 means total nine types of so in which reason or how it can be used means who mono hybrid inheritance it is used to study the pattern of inheritance during the first and the second generation of spring yes and in the hybrid uh, inheritance it is used to study the inheritance pattern of a dominant and the recessive characters for two different traits so my dear students by here i am concluding my today's session and in the next session we can see about the some human characters okay and the genetic disorders also so by this i am concluding my lecture and i am very thank So by this, we have finished our lecture now. Yes. So I would like that my students should read the lesson thoroughly and write the answers and of the questions which are given in the exercise. Read it and learn it. So by hereby, we have completed our today's session. Now, I am ending this lecture. So thank you students for listening me. And we have completed our today's four lectures. Okay.